Today on Comic Misconceptions, we're talking about cars. One of two things in this world that I don't understand. The second one is sports. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that takes you into detail the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander. I mumbled through all that, but you probably understand what's going on here. Today, we're going to be doing another Top 5 episode. This one is about vehicles, but not the best vehicles. No, we're talking about the worst vehicles in comic books, in my opinion. And as with all Top 5 episodes, this is one, not in any particular order, and two, it's all my personal opinion, so it, your opinions are going to vary. So don't yell at me if I miss one of yours. Well, you can, but do it in the comments. What are cars, right? I mean, I know what they do, but how do they do it? I assume under the hood they're just chunks of metal propelled forward by black magic and the power of friendship, but other than that, I got nothing. With that said, comic book cars do not work the same as normal cars and other vehicles as well. We're not going to be just doing cars, so buckle up everybody and, you know, get this show on the road. Other car puns. We're going to start it off with my number five pick. I bet you didn't know that Magneto had a car. Yes, the Magna car has made about two-ish appearances in anything ever. In X-Men number seven, Magneto uses it as his means of escape after he is defeated. There really isn't a lot to know about this vehicle. It appears to have the same powers Magneto has, uh, the ability to levitate and propel itself forward through the power of magnetism. What I love about this vehicle, as opposed to all the other vehicles on the list, is that it doesn't really appear to have a purpose for existing. I mean, having a vehicle that has all the same powers as you is fine, uh, but there has to at least be a point to it, even if it's just you getting paid, like my number four pick. Number four brings us to last week's trivia challenge, which was, what vehicle came into existence when a superhero struggling for rent signed an advertising deal with Corona Motors? Jack Ireland says, the snowmobile, but he meant the spidermobile, which is correct. But don't think that you can just beg me to put you on the show and I'm gonna give in to your every demand. Just kidding, it works every time. Funny thing, my brother actually talked to me about this the other day. His son got a toy from McDonald's that was the Spider-Mobile and he wanted to know if it was just McDonald's trying to sell more toys or if it was actually real. Well, good news or not, it is real. I love Spider-Man, you guys know this. Look, he's right there, okay, and he's also down here. I love him, he's my favorite, but his life isn't always the best. I mean, he has to deal with real world issues like the rest of us, even struggling to get by on his rent money. So when he was strapped for cash, he signed a deal with Corona Motors. In Amazing Spider-Man 126, he was approached by the Carter and Lombardo advertising company to promote the new Corona Motors non-polluting engine. And as Spider-Man puts it, that sounds like first class dumb. But when he finds out that he's short on rent, he comes wall crawling back to take the deal. He finds out that he has to build the Spider-Mobile himself, so he requests some help by his friend Johnny Storm, AKA Human Torch. Johnny completes the car in Amazing Spider-Man number 130. It can shoot webs, project the Spidey symbol, climb up walls, and has an ejector seat and active camouflage. That's all well and good, but Peter Parker doesn't even have his license at this point. The Spider-Mobile, however, is pretty short-lived. In Amazing Spider-Man number 141, Spider-Man is being chased by the cops when he accidentally drives the car off into the Hudson River. Then in Amazing Spider-Man number 160, the Spider-Mobile comes back out of nowhere as a self-driving vehicle that violently hunts down Spider-Man. It's revealed that the Spider-Mobile was brought back and tinkered with by, well, the Tinkerer. During the final fight, the car gets trashed and Spider-Man returns it to the Carter Lombardo Advertising Agency. Good riddance. I chose this one for my list because not even Spider-Man likes it. He just needed some quick cash and that's what makes Spidey interesting to me is I can definitely relate to that. I've been living off $10 for the past couple months and I'm so hungry. Oh, Batman, you do have a cornucopia of bat-themed vehicles and gliders and such, but one of the worst ones has to be the Whirly Bat. In Detective Comics number 257, Batman and Robin are battling some random villain with a giant tentacle robot and it throws the Batmobile against a brick wall, rendering it useless for the rest of the battle. Luckily, Batman was prepared for this and he had a pair of Whirly Bats in the trunk of the Batmobile just in case. Basically, it's just a minimal one-man helicopter that doesn't even do anything cool like the Spidey Mobile or the Magna Car. It just looks 
very dangerous. Those spinning blades could really hurt somebody like in Batman Heart of Hush. For those of you who don't know, Hush is a Batman villain who I really like, but I'm very creeped out by because he cuts people's faces off. In Heart of Hush, he fought his way into the Batcave disguised as Bruce Wayne. Since Hush typically wears a bandage around his face, he made a pit stop while being chased by Batman to wrap his face up. But things weren't going his way in the fight, so he wanted to make an escape in his vehicle of choice the Whirly Bat. Unfortunately, since he rushed applying those bandages, they were flopping around and got caught up in the propeller, sending Hush and the Whirly Bat to an explosive end. Spoilers, by the way. So the Whirly Bat was its most useful purely because of how dangerous and ridiculous it is. But with that being said, I wouldn't mind seeing it make a big screen appearance, possibly in the Man of Steel sequel. Ooh, speaking of Man of Steel. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but kryptonite is not Superman's only weakness. He actually has a couple, including red solar rays. They don't really hurt Superman, but they do take away his powers, rendering him unsuper. So in Action Comics number 480, when a red star goes supernova and fills the galaxy with its rays, Superman is powerless against the attacks of Amazo, an android with all the abilities of the Justice League combined. When Amazo breaks into Superman's fortress in the following issue, Supes has to break out his latest invention, the Supermobile. He designed the Supermobile to have the same powers as himself, and even a few more. It can fly, it has super strength, Super Breath, a conveniently labeled section of Super Visions, which include a switch for normal vision for some reason. I feel like if you needed to see normally, you would just use your eyes, but I don't know. I'm no scientist. A really cool additional power it has is a yellow aura that protects it from when Amazo uses green lantern-like attacks. But this power is kind of curious though, right? I mean, he would have to have predicted that he would both be powerless and facing Amazo to include this yellow aura and for that to make sense at all. Either that or he was planning on attacking some Green Lanterns by himself later and he needed a suit that would act like himself but also provide additional protection. There's some sort of weird conspiracy here that I feel like we never really got into, but... Guess we'll never know. Anyway, so the Supermobile was rendered basically useless after Superman got his powers back in Action Comics number 482. How did he get his powers back, you ask? Well, you know, by Amazo kicking him five days into the future, he was literally drop kicked into next week. So by now in this video, you've seen some pretty elaborate vehicles that mimic the powers of the characters, like the Magna Car and the Spider-Mobile and the Supermobile. They even match the theme of the characters, like the Whirly Bat. But my number one pick, my top pick, is only up top for no other reason than how different it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Thanos Copter. Yes, that's it. It's just a plain yellow helicopter with the word Thanos on it. It doesn't even provide any additional protection that a regular helicopter wouldn't, nor does it do anything cool, and to my knowledge it only appears in Spidey Super Stories number 39 for like two panels, and that's it. The end. And that needs to be in Avengers 3. Yes, more Avengers 3 predictions. We got Star Fox, and we got the Thanos copter. We'll keep building the list. Let's get these going. I'm good. They're all gonna be wrong, but it'll be fun. So what did you guys think of my list? Did I miss any of your favorites? Please let me know in the comments below. And if I got any info wrong, also please let me know while you're down there. NerdSync is all about learning, so I need to provide the most accurate information possible. So I need your help with that. Now let's move on to one of my favorite things, the weekly trivia challenge. So with X-Men Days of Future Past coming out, I'm very excited, but I don't know if you guys have heard this, I learned this the other day. Uh, it's quite possible that the X-Men was a ripoff of another comic book that came out three months prior in which a brilliant man in a wheelchair leads a team of outcasts with superpowers to fight giant robots and such. Sounds very familiar. So this week's trivia challenge is, what comic is that? I didn't feel like writing it out because you guys, you understand. Just do the thing. If you think you know the answer or just want to leave your best guess, you could do so in the comments below. And if you're right, we can feature you on the show next week. So get started on the weekly trivia challenge. 
that's it for Comic Misconceptions this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. And uh, we're going to hopefully stay on track for the rest of the summer, one video a week. But we do need your help with that. If you have some fun trivia or a cool forgotten about storyline from a comic book that you think would make for a cool episode, then please let me know in the comments. And while you're down in the comments, you know, I'm always there if you guys just want to say hi. I always love talking to you guys down there. We'll get a cool conversation going and everything. And if this is your first time hanging out with us at Nerd Sync Productions, please do subscribe. We love seeing you guys every week here. And we are going to be doing much more videos over the summer as well. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, all the social media stuff. We're on it. Just search Nerd Sync. And we'll see you guys right here next week for more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya. So May 3rd marks 2014's Free Comic Book Day, which if you didn't know, is a day where you can go to your local comic book shop, pick up some free comic books. Seriously, that's awesome. I look forward to it every year. There's a link in the description if you want to see what is offered this year. So how did Free Comic Book Day get started? Well, back in 2001, comic book movies were proving not only to be successful theatrically, but also boost the sales of comics themselves. So a guy named Joe Field suggested that, hey,